Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! What does it take? The people who are transformed, the people who become, are those that, number one, those who recognize that you are not yet your best version. The only people who contend for transformation are those who admit Thank God for what I am and where I am, but this is not the best version of me. That there is more. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 12. Those who will contend for transformation beyond the realm of knowledge are those who will recognize and acknowledge that you are not yet your best version. I tell myself that all the time. Joshua Selman, thank God for how far God has brought you Thank God for everything God is using people to say across the globe, but be sure that you are not yet your best version. There are still virgin heights and virgin versions of me that are still calling me to come up higher. Virgin levels of power, virgin levels of understanding and illumination. Sometimes the demon that stops your progress is your current level. It's not an attack from the realm of the spirit. Where you are, can greatly stop where you need to be. Philippians 3.12 Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. This is Paul. You have to understand the man who is speaking here. Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Even without meeting Jesus, he was not a, he was not a non-entity. Paul was a scribe. He was a doctor of the law. Intelligence par excellence. Acknowledged by God, acknowledged by men, even the enemies of the cross, they acknowledge his intelligence. And then he encountered Jesus directly. And then he spent 18 years in the wilderness of Arabia under all kinds of training. That's the man who is talking. Not that I have already attained. It's like a professor emeritus saying, I don't know much. He's talking to his students, so I don't know much. A professor who has been a professor for 20 years, a foremost researcher, one of the few authorities across the globe. And they say, Prof, sir, what do you have to tell us? And he says, well, my dear people, I can only attempt. I don't know much. Ah. Who now marks the script? When every other professor who was there was accredited by that one man, and yet he's telling you he does not know much. Listen, those who contend for transformation are those who always know that everything I am now is only for now. There is still more. Please give us that scripture. Let's finish it up. Is someone learning tonight? It says, either we're already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus. 13, we're reading to 14. Brethren, I count not myself. You count me to have apprehended. You call me Paul the learned, Paul the anointed, Paul the great. But I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. He didn't say forgetting the bad things that are behind. I know you received an award in January, congratulations, but it's over. You will never receive an award for that realm again. So you drop it, pat yourself at the back, and after that, you move forward. Can I tell you, forward thinkers are people who, they rejoice at their current level of success, but they do not stop there. They move forward, they move higher. But this one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind, and reaching forth to those things which are before, 14, I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Listen, those who become are those who never settle. They know that there is always a better and greater version. In this man standing before you is still a better man of God. In this man standing before you is still the potential for a more anointed man. Thank God for the bodies that were healed. What of the ones that were not healed yet? 
Are you saying God cannot touch them? God is true. The problem is the limitation of the vessels. We have not yet contended for that level. You must be honest and sincere and strict with yourself. Champions don't let their tears spare the discipline of pressing forward. When people commend me on what God is doing here in the ministry and across the globe, I thank them, but I know that, um, no, 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 no. We, this is, you, you always hear me say, this is a step out of the cave. Never get to a point in your life where you say, is there anything else? You are dead already. Even in heaven, John was caught up in heaven in the spirit. And when he was in heaven, he wrote the letters to the seven churches and he still had a voice that said, come up here. In other words, in heaven, still come higher. For someone, God is already speaking to you. The version of you of 2019 is still the version of you today because you have not seen anything to challenge you higher. Man of God, there are still grounds. Believe me. Man of God, there are still realms of power. This is why pride is dangerous. Because pride is a full stop in your life where you should put a comma. Hallelujah. No matter how powerful a meeting is, if you ask me how was the meeting, I would just say fine. That answers it. Oh boy, so what should, else should I say? Fine. Ten people got up from the wheelchair out of how many? We have to verify how many people were on wheelchair in the city where you came versus the number. We are grateful, but it should not sponsor mediocrity. For someone, God is challenging you right now. Stop celebrating any arrival even when you have not started. There is still, there are many heights. Stretch yourself. Transformation requires a recognition that you are not yet your best version, that there is more. Number two, those who become, be, those who are transformed, are we together? Are those who realize and recognize that changing, listen carefully, for you to be transformed, it will demand you changing or upgrading your references and your models. You can never be transformed until you sustain the courage to change your models and change your references. For some of you, the reason why you are where you are is that the reference you are using is too small, is too low. Transformation cannot happen until you have a superior reference, a superior model. Someone who is called into the educational sector, for instance, by the time that person has a degree and his reference is a professor and one who has PhDs and DSCs like a thermometer, by the time you are a master's holder, that is, that is, that is, um, that is commendable. But because your model is high, even when you have PhD, it looks like you are just having a school living certificate because the reference is high. Are we together? If you are a man of God and your reference is very high, your model is high, even when you are doing exceptional things based on the context of your environment, because your bar is high, not from a competitive standpoint. This is, we're talking about someone who wants to maximize destiny. There are many people, if they were Jesus, they will not need to die again. After that triumphant entry, straight, they will go to heaven. That you climb that donkey, that's the end. From that donkey straight, you will leave a mess under. No apostles train, no nothing. The mission would have died within one year. But Jesus did a thorough work, not distracted by his results. He would finish a powerful crusade and sit down with one woman and be talking as if he's not the same person who raised the dead. And never make reference to what he did before. He would not talk to her and say, Madam, I'm giving you 10 minutes and you're wasting my time. Do you know what happened to Lazarus? You are playing with me. You've not heard about me. Look at this. When Jesus resurrected, 
You thought that you would take the time to enjoy and celebrate. Resurrection is not a small thing. You know what happened in hell. As soon as he got up, he said, listen, I'm here for 40 more days. We are behind in our lectures. All of you come together. Oh, you are the one, you are risen, I'm risen. You've seen me, that's all right, sit down. Let's get to work. 40 days, non-stop. Afterwards, he told them, now I can go. When you get to the world of champions, celebration is minimal. Only enough to motivate you and give God glory. And then you fire on. Are we together? So you must change your references. I've taught you here that transformation is difficult without a reference. You cannot become nothing. You need to become something exact. My question is what or who is your reference? If your reference, respectfully speaking, is a mediocre. You see, there are references that when you put, even if you don't go high, you will still feel comfortable. Watch this. Let me go down just for sake of explanation. If, sorry for those who may not be able to see me, but if this is my reference, watch this, this first step, this is my reference. Do I need to jump seriously to get there? Even if it's by mistake, I can stumble there. But can you stumble here by mistake? So while you are here, those who are here clapping for you and say, what else is left? You must be able to focus. And then you climb higher. And those who are down are saying, this is too much. Uh, what kind of anointing are you looking for? Whereas there are results that only those who are standing here can produce. Is someone learning now? You must change your references. You must change your models. Upgrade your references. Upgrade your models. What kind of church do you want to produce? What kind and quality of believers do you want to produce? Are we together? What do you want the testimony of the average believer under your care to look or sound like? It's not just having a crowd of people. You must be interested in quality. Is someone learning? Number three, what is the implication and what does it take to be? What does it take to be transformed? Are you ready? Those who become and those who are transformed are those who are willing to give up age-long, limiting, unscriptural, and anti-destiny beliefs. Those who contend for transformation are those who are willing to give up age-long, limiting, unscriptural, and anti-destiny beliefs. Just because a mindset has been there for a long time does not mean it is correct. Africa, we need to trust God for grace. We are people of grace and potential. Now, let me tell you, when I talk of dropping wrong mindsets, I'm not respectfully speaking. I don't necessarily mean picking Western mindsets. I mean picking scriptural mindsets. You can drop an African mindset and pick a Western mindset and you are still in the same place spiritually. So I don't mean getting a more technological error. That's not what I'm teaching. Africa's error may be crude. Then you now pick and advance a technological error. It's still error. Are we together? You will never contend for transformation until you are willing to give up age-long, limiting, unscriptural, and anti-destiny beliefs. Let me confess to you up front that this is very, very hard because we usually are emotionally connected to our mindsets. If no matter how wrong it is, there is an emotional affinity you have towards your mindset. And stripping yourself of that mindset to embrace a new scriptural and superior belief system is almost like asking you to remove your clothes and stand naked. There are people who would rather die than to contend for scriptural transformation. Respectfully speaking, we come, there are six geopolitical zones 
within Nigeria and I submit to you that every geopolitical zone has its blessing and advantage territorially speaking but every geopolitical zone has its limitation programmed by demon spirits territorially if you want to rise and do much for the kingdom you have to obtain grace from God to put a superior reference that is higher than your territory the, the scripture God gave me that delivered me from the limitation of my territory was John 1, 6 and 7. There was a man sent from God. That thing changed my life. Sent from God. That means the physical point of my arrival is not really the basis for my victory. It is where I came from. I never came from heaven. I was sent. He didn't say there was a man who came from God. That means my arrival was the conclusion of an intelligent discussion between divinity. They saw the space that my relevance can produce. As far as kingdom come, I was sent with intention. When I arrived the earth, my parents gave me a name. Lovely name, by the way. May God bless them. They are watching. Next verse, verse 7. The same came for a witness. So it tells you immediately the basis of your victory. He that cometh from above, he says, is above all. And I made up my mind that I refuse to be limited by the thinking and the influences that are associated with my region. No. Is someone learning? A young lady was crying and complaining to her mom about life and she just felt that life was unfair and she was shouting and yelling at the mom and the mom didn't say a word the mom just went in front of a, a gas cooker a four four burner the one that has four compartments and the mom put three three pots and put water on them while the lady was yelling mommy are you hearing me life is unfair and in one of the pots that was boiling, she put an egg, e -double G. In one of the pots that was boiling there, she put coffee. Are we together? And then in one of the pots, I can't remember again what she put there. Rat? Carrots, thank you. Are we together? And she allowed it for a few, for a few maybe some time and then she called the young lady and opened the pots and said tell me what you see and she found out that number one her observation was there was fire under the pot on all all three pots so they went through the same situation of heat are we together but for the egg that was fragile and could just you know fall to the ground and you would lose it it had now become hard and strong you could even peel the back and you would not destroy it for the carrots that seem to be very hard now you could almost bend it and it would bend like this but she noticed something strange with the coffee the coffee looked like the smallest of the seeds there and when she put it the entire water had turned to the coffee color and she said all of them were subjected to the same situation. One influenced the system and turned it to look like the color. The other one became a victim, became hard. The other one became soft. But the other one said, I will not only change, I will transform the system. Is someone learning now? You can be one of these three. Some of you were very hard now. Some of you were very soft now. Some of you look very small and you're looking at yourself and say, small me in such a system. Learn from the coffee seed. It transformed everything there. Same thing happens with salt. You pick a pinch of salt and put it around and turn it and that's it. You don't see it again, but you taste the food. It will establish its presence there. Even if you keep, even if the food spoils, the taste of salt will still be there. There are certain foods when they spoil, they will taste like something else. But as for salt, it will still be there. Is someone learning? You must be willing to drop age-long limiting unscriptural and anti-destiny beliefs. Number four, those who become 
those who contend for transformation are those who are ready and prepared to face and endure the consequences of growth and progress. Are we together? Let me take it again. Those who become, those who are transformed are those who are willing and are prepared to face the consequences and to endure the consequences of growth and progress. Let me tell you the truth. Contending for growth and progress comes with consequences, sometimes unfavorable consequences. But if you really want to be transformed, you must be ready and prepared to face and endure the consequences of growth and progress. Daniel chapter 3, for sake of time, let's start from verse 6, then we'll jump to verse 12 and we'll continue till I ask you to stop. This was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember, King Nebuchadnezzar, there was a 90 feet statue of pure gold that was built. And he said at the sound of whatever it is now, they should bow down. They would have bowed down and remained there. No promotion, no increase. But here it is. The Bible says, whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth shall at the same hour be thrown into the burning fiery furnace. Now go to verse 12. The Bible says there are certain Jews. They were reporting them now. And O king, they have not regarded you. They have not served your gods. They have not worshipped the golden image that you have set up. Next verse. Nebuchadnezzar heard this. He was angry. Listen to me. There are consequences for desiring to go forward. When Jesus said, let us go to the other side, the consequence of that decision was there was a storm. The disciples almost lost their life. Advancement is not convenient. Transformation is not convenient. It will change many things about you. When you make up your mind that you want to carry genuine spiritual power, you make up your mind that you want to be learned and sound in scripture, I submit to you it will change many things. Are we together? They brought these men before the king, 14. Nebuchadnezzar spoke to them and said, Is it true that you have violated my commands? 15. Watch this now. He now gave them one last chance. Doesn't it look like what life does? Choose to remain here and be comfortable or go through the controversy that comes with advancement. 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you on this matter. Look at this gentleman, 18. He said, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from this burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand, 18. But if not, but if not, I know based on the word of God that as I advance into this business, as I advance in ministry, this is what should be. But if not, I rather fail following God than to mark time in fear. Those who, listen, those who move forward and are transformed are people who are willing to go through the discipline and the consequences. There are many of you, please listen to me. There are many of you making a decision for Jesus and making a decision for a meaningful life may cost you the sponsorship of those who are currently helping you. They will make up your mind their minds and say I will never help you there are many people who are of many different faiths who came to Jesus Christ and their family members warned them and say listen we're giving you one last chance think about it and remain with status quo and find the comfort or make up your mind and they made up their minds and for five years nothing changed they really suffered as a result let me tell you the truth advancement comes with severe consequences making up your mind for Jesus. You would think that after such a bold statement, God would not even allow the story to continue. He would step in. Do you know how frustrating it is to stand and defend the name of the Lord and the trouble they told you would happen still happens? As though God were not watching. 19. Learn something tonight. Nebuchadnezzar was angry at what he perceived to be their disdain and he commanded that they should hit the fire seven times hotter let's rush 20. 
he commanded that the boys be cast into the fire next verse and the boys were bound as at the time they were tying them, brothers and sisters, God was watching in heaven. I wonder what they were saying. You thought that they were not afraid. They just said, God, you will come. It's a lie. They were humans. They were shaking like a leaf. So this is how we're going to die. But Lord, we defended you. How many of you know that there were people who stood before terrorists and they told them, renounce your faith and we will kill you. They said, we will not. They shot them and they died. There are consequences when you want to go forward, my people. There are people today who would have been billionaires with compromise, but they gave up billions. Everybody called them fool, including we pastors. They say, you, there's a way you have done this thing. You are, you are really stupid. And they felt stupid later on because they thought that at the end of living a nice life, their superior will call them and say, I've watched you. I shall bless you. They say, now that your tenure is over, get out of this place. Let the person who walk with us come. Do you know how difficult it is when your loving God makes you look stupid? When your honoring God makes you look stupid, you would have compromised and by now you would have had a job. But for three years you have refused. What of the politician who would have compromised and become a governor or a senator? He was given the offer and he said, no, for the sake of my faith. Is someone learning? Transformation is costly. It's not just sitting in your room and changing states. You must be ready to face and endure the consequences. Let's finish this scripture. 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the fiery furnace was put so hot, it slew those that the men threw. 23. And the three boys fell down bound in the burning fire. There are times where God can stop you from even entering the fire. But there are times, sadly, ladies and gentlemen, you will still enter that fire. But trust him enough. Trust him enough. So you are making up your mind. You will never follow any man for money again. You are making up your mind. You are going to serve the Lord and have a, dignity, a, a destiny of dignity and color. And your friends can warn you. You know that your accommodation in Abuja, you know how it, it, and where are you going to get 1.2 million from? And you make up your mind. And then your rent expires and you drop your prayer request in a miracle service and afterwards your landlord is waiting for you you flog it out and nothing seems to happen you have a choice to go back but i've said it here the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to move forward whether you go back or go forward you are not where you were and you are not where you need to be it is wiser to continue is someone learning 25 he answered and said lo i see four men who are loose walking in the midst of the fire they have no heart and the form of the fourth is like the son of god i don't know everything about god but there is something i know about god that when god decides to honor your pressing into him i've taught it here for many years you will look like a fool but the day your deliverer arises for many years your church may not seem to grow because you have refused you will not go and dapple your hand and collect any power whatever for many years they will not promote you in the office because they told you that they should corporately collect bribe and you refuse they insulted you for being a christian you cried and said this and that and that god can arise oh he does arise and when god arises he said let god arise and let his enemies be scattered. 26, watch this. Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, this and that and that, come forth. And they came out in the midst of the fire. 27, we're stopping at 30. The princes, governors, captains, and all those people were there. The Bible says, not a hair of their head was singed. Their bodies, the fire had no power and there was no smell of fire that passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He gave a decree by reason of their courage to remain. 
For someone God is speaking to you, remain. Turning back is wasting the destiny of the thousands connected to you. You have already started the journey of transformation. Don't go back. When your father got to this point, he was tired. The mockery was too much. He had to go back. Now you are suffering it. By the time you go back, your children will suffer it too. It is better to press and finish. Do you know? I vowed to God and I said, everything, if there are any negative things that came from my background, I would rather pay the price and go through it as a person. Let me be the one to stand by God and win that war. That all who come from me and all the generations after us, are we together now? Yes. Some of us may need to make that decision. The, the lineage of poverty that you came from, now you want to walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity. Sometimes it may mean sacrificing 10 years of your comfort to contend for transformation. But if and when you do that, you would have started a dynasty of kingdom wealth and blessing. Are you willing to go that far? In many parts of Africa, when the missionaries came and they brought the gospel, some of them, when they waved their wives goodbye, they really meant it. Their wives knew they would not come back. They knew they would not come back, and yet they still went. Hallelujah. You must be ready to endure the consequences of growth and progress. Who is this that is staying in our house? You are always praying. You are not a pastor. But sir, you know the background. Don't pray anything. If you are going to continue praying and continue studying, you are getting out of my house. And sometimes you are going to have to make that choice. And you go out of your house, you carry your little bag, and you are strolling like a madman in the middle of the night. And you are saying, Lord, I'm doing this for you. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be Holy God's fire!